Welcome back to you forever, back again on another video, I'm back with another wrestling related video. Now in this video, I'm counting down my top 10 favorite tag teams of 2019. If y'all have not checked out my top 10 favorite superstars of 2019, make sure y'all check that video out, please. Now, starting from the top at number 10, my 10th favorite tag team inside 2019 was WWE's The New Day. I have to admit, I'm not that big a fan of the New Day's antics. Like, I'm not a big fan of Big E's and all his weird stuff that he do. I'm, I'm just not. I'm just not. It's not for me. Xavier Woods and Kofi, they all right. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't like when Kofi used to twerk and wear tank tops or whatever, but that's for them to do. <laughs> and the kids like it and think it's funny and stuff. The Big E stuff, I just think it's too much. I don't need to see that crap. Him with, I don't even want to mention it, but. I, I, you cannot deny their in-ring ability. They always have good matches. They always have good feuds. All three of them are over as single competitors if they wanted to like just have single matches but still be in a team and have singles matches. Kofi was world champion for, what, was he world champion for like six months? Like April, May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, he was champion for a while and he was a legitimate champion. At the end of the day, he was winning matches clean. So. I mean, the New Day. I, I like their matches. And it was hard just trying to pick who to put as number 10, but I feel like the New Day's matches outdid everybody else that I didn't put on this list. Going into number nine, maybe all y'all might not know these people, but my ninth favorite team is Leon Ruff and AR Fox. They are best known for Evolve. I think they're the current reigning Evolve Tag Team Champions that they won on the actual Evolve show on WWE Network at the beginning of 2019. So check that tag team match out. I became a fan of them when I went to my first Evolve show, which I think might have been two years ago at this point. It might have just been a year and so I don't know. But I already knew who AR Fox was because of PWG. I didn't know that he pretty much changed. Though. His new character is like super duper hood and just like, I mean, I'm into it. I like it. But when I was watching him in PWG, he was like a high flyer, just like Ricochet, doing you know, normal Ricochet stuff. But he has reinvented himself. He actually has a character. He has like a group of people he come out with. Like it's a big baby face group. And they just good. And Leon Ruff is from Detroit, my hometown. And he, I saw him at a Evolve show and just, he's amazing in the ring. Y'all really need to check him out. Up and comer. He actually had a match on WWE Network NXT not that long ago. Like he, he is really, really good. I can definitely see Leon Ruff going far he he's really small though he looked like a cruiserweight i actually met him too in detroit his family is always there supporting him and he always put on a good match he's really good he's really really good in the ring and i love that he followed his dream and he's a professional wrestler so just liking somebody as a person just put them up there as being one of my favorite tag teams and that manager is uh ar fox's wife ar fox's real life wife is their manager but it's a big group of them. Check them out if you haven't seen them. Uh, number eight, I got exposed to this group in, last year in 2019, and I was like, wait a minute. Because <laughs> I thought I knew this group, but then like it was different people. Yeah, I'm talking about AEW's LAX. Now I'm used to LAX being Her Hernandez and Homicide, the Notorious 187, Homicide, you know, all that stuff. But when I saw them, I was like, wait a minute. You're not Hernandez. You're not Homicide. Who are you? But then you see they matches. And oh my God. And then their manager was like Conan. He looked like an old school pimp or player gangster from Mexico. And it's just like, because I, I was looking at their TNA stuff. And then they had a few with the OGs. Like it was, it was amazing. They are amazing in the ring. The character, well, they, granted the character came from original LAX, but I just love them. They are amazing. And they have some great, great matches. Look up their matches. I've seen so many of LAX matches in 2019 without watching TNA, being a TNA viewer. I wish I could watch TNA, but. And now they're in AEW, and I actually get to see their matches because I do watch AEW week to week. And they're just amazing. Number six. They're best known for PWG, I would say. They're the current PWG Tag Team Champions from what I remember. It's the Rascals, Zachary Wentz and Desmond Xavier. I already knew about Desmond Xavier because of TNA. I saw him on there. I thought he was Leo Rush. I'm just being honest, I thought he was Leo Rush. But then I learned of him. I watched some of his matches. I liked him. Then I learned he was in the tag team. And they were PWG Tag Team Champions for a while. I play with them on my PlayStation, I added them to my universe, and I love Zachary Wentz 
moveset <laughs> in real life and on my game, that is. And I just, I think that their matches are amazing. I think they were robbed of the TNA Tag Team Champions. Look that program up, because I definitely think they should have been TNA Tag Team Champions in 2019. Look that up. The Rascals, justice for the Rascals, because they should have been TNA Tag Team Champions. They were robbed, for real. But they are the current PWG Tag Team Champions, and I think they have been champion for over a year, like well over a year. They, they've held the, ta the PWG Tag Team Champions for a while now. And they're just an amazing tag team. I can definitely see them going far as a team or as individuals because Zachary Wentz is amazing by himself. And I think Desmond Xavier, he's an amazing single star too. Uh, now we get to number six. I love this team. I wish, I wish I could put them higher on the list, but it was just some teams that I was like, ugh, I like them more. <sighs> I just, I hear their music playing in the background right now. I just see their entrance and their energy and everything about them. I love them. They are best known for New Japan. It is Rapungi 3K. Rapungi. Rapungi. I love it. I love their entrance. I love all the energy they have. I love their matches. I love their manager, Rocky Romero. I love the story on how he got them together. They won the tag team titles. They did that in 2009, 2020. I just watched the G, the wrestling team. I love it. I love them. Every single match I see there is so high energy. And his show had a singles run where he was amazing. Like, they're, I love them. They are, if y'all have not seen the Pungy 3K, look them up for real. They, you will not be disappointed. They are one of my favorite tag teams in the world today. I love her Punky 3K. And I love the name of the team too. I like so I love their music, their music video, their manager, their entrance, their in-ring ability, their matches, everything about them. I love her Punky 3K. Number five. I've loved this team ever since the very first video package promo I've seen them do. I, I wish that they had more exposure too, because I do think they're legitimately one of the best tag teams in the world. They're best known for Ring of Honor. It is them boys, the Briscoe brothers, and as much as I love the Usos, they are the originators of day one. Day one, look up their day one promo. Look up their cosmetically pleasing promo. Look up those promos from the Briscoes, because when I was first getting into Ring of Honor, I don't know what, but I heard of the Briscoe Brothers in Ring of Honor, looked up one of their promos. I think it was Cosmetically Pleasing or Day One, and I was suckered in. I sent it to my cousin who watches wrestling semi, like, they are just amazing promos. They're amazing promos, and their in-ring ability, they're more of a brawling style, so it's kind of like, in 2019, 18, 17, I feel like the world more likes the high flying, doing tombstones, flip pile drivers, all that. But the Briscoes are just old school, like the Revival. I would love to see the Revival and the Briscoes go at it. Or even like, Rock, Briscoes have some great matches with the Young Bucks. Jay Briscoe was a former world champion like twice. They, they're good. Mark can be a great comedy wrestler, but also a serious wrestler. They are an amazing team. I don't really have much, but their promo, if you have to look up something about the Briscoes, I would say forget the matches, look up the promos from Jay Briscoe. Because he, he, if he got to WWE, he could be like Stone Cold. Out of every pro wrestler that WWE has, I think Jay Briscoe is the most like Stone Cold. More than Kevin Owens. He actually took the title from Kevin Owens in Ring of Honor, look that up. <laughs> Number four, oh my God, speaking of promos, thinking of, speaking of charisma, this team is in WWE, so they're known for WWE. Y'all already know who I'm talking about. If I say promos, charisma, what? The Street Profits, they are amazing. They are, like, I didn't think I would like them as much as I do. When they were first having their video packages about to debut in NXT, I did not think this team would be like this. And to me, they even better on the main roster. I thought they were so good at NXT when they debuted that they, like, it might not connect on the main roster because we've seen that happen before. Let's not mention, uh, what was Eric Young Group's called? Um, not Chaos, Sanity. Let's not forget the Vault Villains, the Ascension. Even the Wyatt family, they were super over. Those four teams were super over inside NXT, and they just didn't work on the main roster. Well, the Wyatt family kind of, yeah. Uh, but Ascension, Va Villains, and uh, Sanity, they just didn't work. Sanity probably wasn't given a fair chance either, though, because I don't remember one thing Sanity did. 
But anyway, Street Profits are just amazing. They had amazing matches this year. I loved watching them win the tag team titles. I'm glad that they got to win them before they left NXT. I love their promos on Raw. Montez Ford is a star. He will be a world champion somewhere. If not in WWE, he will be a world champion. Mark my words. He is amazing. Too much charisma. The most charisma out of anybody in WWE. He has too much charisma not to be a world champ single star. And Angelo Dawkins is really good. I like his hot tag. <laughs> number three. No surprise to anyone. Well, it's probably a surprise that they're not number one. But I pick number three favorite tag team in 2020. The Young Bucks. I feel like uh, 2019 wasn't the Young Bucks' best year. They wasn't having these super amazing matches like they were in previous years. But they always have good matches. That's so weird to say. Because their matches... Sorry, y'all didn't get a five-star match this time. Y'all got a 4.75 star. Because they... they I don't think the Young Bucks have ever had a match that was not four stars at least. <laughs> they're just an amazing tag team. They're one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. And I love that they're assigned to AEW and they're so big in that company. They're super like global world. The stuff they do in Japan, stuff they do in the US. They're just, they're an amazing tag team. I don't really have much to say about the Young Bucks. I'm, I mean, it, it speaks for themselves. If you haven't heard of, your, of the Young Bucks, you need to. <laughs> you need to. They're best known for AEW now, but they tore it up in TNA. They tore it up in Ring of Honor. They tore it up in PWG. Amazing tag team. There was a point in time, I even said this to my cousin, like, I don't ever remember seeing the Young Bucks have single matches. Do they only have tag team matches? I'm okay with that. Because you know in tag team feuds where they have, all right, so this person and this person will have a singles match. The next week, this person and this person will have a singles match. And then the next week, they'll switch it up and do it all over again. Young Bucks didn't do that ever. I, I only saw them in sync and tag team matches, and I was all right with it. I was, I, I wish more tag teams did this. But then Nick had a, a singles match with Ray Phoenix on AEW Dynamite one day, and uh, they even mentioned it on commentary like, "Yeah, Nick hasn't had a singles match in so long." But Ray Phoenix is a single star and a tag team star, and Nick lost. And I like that. I like that as a story. The Young Bucks are just too good, too good. Number two. Speaking of. Ray Phoenix, it is the Lucha Brothers. I love them. Ray Phoenix, Pentagon Jr., the Lucha Brothers. I know I did not roll my heart good at all, but I just love their matches. When I first saw them, I was like, oh my God, Pentagon, <laughs> who is that? I was like, who is that? He was in my top 10 favorite superstars, mainly because of just how he looked. The look is just like Bandito. Bandito and Pentagon looks. They just take you away, like, what? Same with uh, Marty Skrull. Like, you look at them and you're just, like, interested. Like, let me do some research. But, like, Lucha Bros matches blew me away. Blew me away the first time I saw them. And I was just like, I want to see more. And I watched so many of these tag team matches. And I'm like, where did these two come from? Because I, I didn't see them in 2017, I know. Or 16 or 15, did they just come out? Or get big, like because they are too good. They are amazing. And, and Pentagon, I was gonna say he should be a world champion, but apparently he was in TNA. So, and Ray Phoenix is amazing. The stuff he can do with the ropes. I saw a match where he literally walked from one ring post to the other on the top rope. Just how does he do that crap? I don't know, but they're amazing. And my number one favorite tag team of 2019 goes to the Undisputed Era. I just personally, I just think that they're the best. They have the best matches, everybody inside the group as a whole. Because the tag team, like Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly were already my favorite tag team in Ring of Honor when I was watching Ring of Honor every single week in 2000, I don't know what year, I forget what year it was when I was watching them. But they were my favorite tag team back then. And Kyle O'Reilly, I thought was like so good as a wrestler that he could have been a world champion, and apparently he was in Ring of Honor. I missed it. I wasn't watching Ring of Honor at that time, but I'm glad he got a world title. Uh, Bobby Fish is amazing at promos. I wish he could talk more inside WWE because he is amazing. I'm letting y'all know, Bobby Fish is an amazing talker. Let him, if it was just him and Kyle O'Reilly on the main roster, they, like, 
You know how, how I said sometimes there would be one person on the tag team has a singles match? When Kyle O'Reilly has a singles match and Bobby Fish was on the outside of the ring, Bobby Fish would be the best thing in the match. And Kyle O'Reilly is amazing. But Bobby Fish is just a great, great talker, great, great manager, great promo. If his in-ring career ever comes to an end, hopefully from his choice, he would make a great manager or commentator, whichever one he desires to do. But he would make a great coach too. And Bobby Fish is good in the ring too. But they, Roderick Strong won a world title. Tag, uh, Red Dragon had, a tag, had the tag title. And Adam Cole had the world title. The whole group is amazing. Group of the year, tag team of the year, and they were my favorite. I just love every, everything about them. And they're heels and they win by themselves. So they have the best matches. Out of everybody on this list, Red Dragon, Undisputed Era had the best matches, and they were my favorite to watch, so they're my number one favorite. Honorable mentions, Jurassic Express, I really liked them. Chaos, I didn't really know of them until I looked up Rapunky 3K for this video. I had to get their, um, some images of them, and I was like, who's Chaos? And I looked up, and I'm like, oh my god, this group is amazing, I gotta do some research on them now. Uh, best friends, love them. STU, I'm not that big a fan. But I like the in-ring matches. Motor City Machine Guns. I heard that they won a title inside 2019. I had no clue that they even formed. They even got back together in 2019. So I have to look that up. The Revival. I really wanted to put them on this list, but I just couldn't because they did nothing that I was favorite in, in 2019. And of course, my number one favorite tag team in the world today is the Usos. I, when I initially made this list, I put them as number one and started working backwards. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I can't leave these people off. I can't leave the New Day off because it would have just been the Usos is number one, Undisputed Era is number two, and then it goes up and the New Day would have been left off. I can't do that. That's not fair when the Usos did jack shit all year. So, but those are my favorite tag teams of 2019. Be sure to leave y'all votes inside, or y'all favorites inside the comment section down below, as well as give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all forms of social media. Until next time, y'all, catch you later.